Okay then, it's time to go through some Overwatch League transfers once again. We didn't actually do it yesterday because there wasn't much going on, so we have one to cover from there. This is Rhea moving over to the Washington Justice. He was at the Hangzhou Spark. Rhea is an off-tank, which, yeah, it's a little weird, isn't it, considering Washington Justice? Uh, literally a day before that signed Fury. I am not expecting Rhea to get too much playtime. If he does, then Washington Justice must have a serious problem because um fury should be the starting off tank for the washington justice i'd be very surprised if he isn't maybe this is them trying to be prepared for a possible double off tank meta um in that case and it's kind of fine but Rhea is almost certainly going to be the backup off tank to fury because fury is well fury he's still one of the best off tanks in the league and probably the world so yeah don't be silly washington justice don't be silly uh, but, right, let's get into the meat of this then, uh, with the transfers that went, out, went on yesterday. First of all, we have a new support coming into the Chengdu Hunters. This is Nisha, the Chinese support player. He is a main support, plays a lot of Lu Mercy Lucio. He is coming in from Billy Billy Gaming. Uh, he did actually retire for a little while before after he left the original academy of the Guangzhou Charge, which was T1W Guangzhou Charge Academy. Um, or the one winner it was also known as and he's a good player he's won things with the one winner back when it was the one winner um but Bitty Bitty gaming they've been coming up short recently they found themselves behind team cc and flag gaming uh which means they've had a third in season one of china and a third in season two of china um the past two seasons of contenders so again this seems to be a rolling theme with the Chengdu Hunters. They're picking up Chinese talent, as they always do, but they are picking up Chinese talent that is not at the top of China, uh, or right at the summit of China, which is... Ah, it's weird. One thing we will say for Nisha, though, is that he did well in the Pacific Showdown. He got third in the Pacific Showdown when he was with the one winner, and when that was when they lost 3-0 to 2 Blast, who were a very good team back then. So that was very good. Uh, they also took LG Huya very, very close. And uh, they, that, that was a really good team. That was the original Academy of Chengdu. Um, they were a really good team back when they were formed. Um, but yeah, this is a good signing for Chengdu, but I don't think it's outstanding. I haven't seen any outstanding signings for Chengdu. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Right. Okay, then. Let's get into some real interesting ones, shall we? We've got two more to go through. Both of them are DPS players. We have been waiting a long time, actually, on news of both of these players. First of all, this is Shockwave. So Shockwave, um, he was with the Raspberry Racers uh, back this time last year. And he was a great... Actually, no, he was with uh, he was with Montreal Rebellion back then, actually. He was then went to Raspberry Racers, which were an EU contenders team. I love the name. I love Raspberry Racers. Um, they got bought out by a Bay Alliance, the team that has just beaten British Hurricane for the uh, British Hurricane's uh, reign in Contenders is over, but that is a caveat that I'm going to and I don't need to. Um, he then moved to Vancouver Titans, when Vancouver Titans uh, basically blew up, got rid of their runaway roster. They signed up Second Wind, or a lot of it from NA Contenders, and they brought in a few others. And Shockwave was one of those other players, he's a Danish uh, DPS player, and he set the world alight on that Vancouver Titans side. Definitely the best player they picked up. Um, he looked incredible, and he is a very flexible player as well, but he is mainly a hit scan. but I was really impressed with his with his Echo and his Widow. Um, his Echo really did tear apart some teams at times. He is leaving the Vancouver Titans. We'd have, sus we'd have suspected this because we didn't think the Vancouver Titans would be able to hold on to who had been their very best player this season. He is moving to the Philadelphia Fusion. Hmm. I did not expect Shockwave to get... A team quite as big as Philadelphia Fusion. I am not going to lie. Now, I, I, I'll i be honest. I think Shockwave has got great potential. I think Shockwave is a great player. Do I think Shockwave is Philadelphia Fusion level? No. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Um, This team has let go of Ivy. I think Ivy is better than Shockwave. And with the transfer that's come up in a minute as well... I really do feel that this is a downgrade for the Philadelphia Fusion. It's also moving into a more mixed roster. Shockwave has never, from what I can remember, played on a Korean roster. It'll be interesting. I think all of Philadelphia Fusion speak English, if I remember rightly, which means it'll be interesting with Mano. I have a lot of worries about Philadelphia. A lot of worries, I'm not going to lie. 
They've now got a pretty passive main tank in Mano. They got a pretty darn aggressive uh, Lucio in Funny Astro. Now, uh, an aggressive uh, main support. Alarm can be one of the two. They have Poco. And it feels like there's a lot of Clash of Styles in this team. There's rumors that they might get Mecho, but they might not as well. So I'm not going to go on about that. But it feels like some of this team is passive. Some of this team is ultra aggressive. And some of this team, it's just straight downgrades. When you're, when you're taking out Ivy and you're left with EQO and Shockwave. EQO is great. Shockwave, I don't see it. I do not see it. Carpe is the only guy that is offering, well, Carpe and Poco are the only guys offering stability on this team. And I don't know. Carpe, I don't think, is as flexible as some other players on this roster that are now not there. I do feel like the Philadelphia Fusion on paper don't look as powerful as they were in 2020. And in 2020, they got boomed in the playoffs. So, or in the grand finals. It is a rough one for Fusion. And it will be interesting to see how this works out. Of course, 9k coming in from Paris Eternal might have a pretty big brain idea on his hands. And if it works, it works. He's still got Christopher there and Moby Dick. Um, the only guy obviously left KDG going over to Toronto to fight, who we'll be talking about in a minute. But this is a this is an okay move. But I still don't feel like it's a poggers move. I don't feel like this is a big move for Philadelphia. This is Philadelphia signing up some nice talent that may be good in the future, but isn't going to get them to the top right now. And so I think some teams... When I did that power rankings, the two early power rankings, I feel like some teams are starting to steal a little bit of their ground away from Philadelphia Fusion in the terms of power rankings. And so I worry for them a little bit. Of course, still early days. They have seven players. They could be signing more. They still need an off tank. And we will see who that is. But it's still early days. Well, they, don't, they don't need an off tank. I shouldn't say that, but you would expect them to sign off tank. But we'll see. Philadelphia Fusion, it is early days, but I feel like the stonks are dropping slightly for the Fusion. And it might be a hot take. I'm sure people will have their own discussions in the comments about that, but our last transfer still involves a Philadelphia Fusion, so that's lovely, isn't it? This, I hinted to just now, is Hisu. Hisu is leaving the Philadelphia Fusion. This had been rumored for a while. And he is following KDG to the Toronto Defiant. Wow. Wow, we clap. That is brilliant from Toronto Defiant. I am not going to lie. Um, I have had a lot of questions about this Toronto Defiant side when they picked up Beast. They have answered them impeccably so far. They've brought in Aztec, one of the best flex supports. I keep going on about him. They brought in Anson J. Then they brought in Sado. Now they've brought in Hisu. Hisu... Great DPS player. Was at run Runaway. He was great at Runaway. As you know with, you know, with uh, with Philadelphia Fusion, he was runner-up in the Summer Showdown. He was runner-up in the Countdown Cup. Because, you know, it's Philadelphia Fusion things. But there were worries about the way Hisu was utilised in the Grand Finals by Philadelphia Fusion. And it came back a lot on KDG. Uh, a lot of people were saying, well, he's playing Widow. Why are we not playing Carpe? Blah, 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 blah. I think, honestly, Hisu is in there for flexibility more than anything else. I think he's a more flexible player than Carpe. But this is a great signing for Toronto. A fantastic signing. And that team is really, really starting to shape up like a team that is... I wouldn't say they're doing quite what Dallas were doing, but they're a team that could compete with that Dallas side. Now we're looking at a team that has a fantastic support line. Like a, a support line that has potential to be one of the best in the league, in my opinion. Then we have Sado, who is... Yeah, he's had a rough times, but last season, he was one of the best main tanks around, and he will be under the same head coach that he was last season. Then we have Hisu. Hisu is a great DPS player. Even if you think he wasn't utilised properly in the Grand Finals for Philadelphia Fusion, he was a great he's a great DPS player, great history of Runaway, and great history in the league. Can't argue with that. He's at the top of his game. And he will be fantastic for them, I am sure. Then you've got Logix still on the roster. Logix? Yeah. He's had a rough time of it in the league, hasn't he? We can't deny that with Logix. With Toronto and Florida. But 
I still think Logix is a good player. Logix has a great history. I just don't think he's had the players around him technically to pop off as well as he possibly could have done. So I think Logix is still a great stable player to have on the roster, even if it's just a backup. Then we have Beast, basically backup main tank. Uh, Beast can also learn from Sado. Now, uh, Beast may be a little bit of a development project for, for the Toronto Defiant coming forward, or going forward. Um, but I still think this roster is shaping up quite nicely. They still have holes to fill, obviously. They need a new off-tank, and they need some more DPS, in my opinion. But if they sign a really nice off-tank, my, my money is on QOQ, because I'm not quite sure who else is around right now to fill that role. Or maybe a Korean contender's off-tank. Maybe they sign someone like Huyo. Um... That's just the name I picked I picked out there because Huyo is still playing at the very top of Korean contenders. And then they pick up a really nice DPS player. And they pick up a... It would have to be a really nice projectile DPS player. Now, you know, they could also pick up Glister if they wanted to. Who's someone on the market and I think should get picked up uh, as, a, as a third option. But I don't think they will do that considering they've now got Logix and Hisu. Um, I think in terms of projectile... It's a difficult one. And the biggest name on the market in terms of projectile DPS right now is Rascal. Now, Rascal has the potential to go to a lot of places. Uh, there is obviously the Philadelphia Fusion. There is obviously the Los Angeles Gladiators, Toronto Defiant. Philadelphia Fusion did mention in their tweet when releasing Carpe and signing Shockwave that it's, uh, they said they rounded out their DPS. If that is the case, then Philadelphia Fusion are not signing Rascal. Which is, in my opinion, an error on the Philadelphia Fusion's part, because that's the only person I could have seen as an upgrade to Ivy. So, that means Rascal could be off elsewhere. Maybe Rascal goes to NYXL. Maybe Rascal goes to the Los Angeles Gladiators. I would like very much to see Rascal partnered up with Birdering again. That is one hell of a DPS duo if you want one. Although Kevster is still a fantastic person himself to fill that role. Um, which leaves us, if they do stick with Kevster at the Gladiators... It leaves us pretty much, in my opinion, with Toronto or NYXL. On the off chance, it might be Houston. But it'll be interesting. I'm still very interested to see if Rascal, where Rascal goes. And I know this has gone off on a little caveat, but imagine if Toronto Defiant were to sign Rascal. They have signed some big names in this offseason. Hisu, Sado, Aztec, even coming from contenders is a big name. If they were managed, If they managed to sign Rascal... The stonks of the Toronto Defiant, they're going for the roof now. They'll go through the stratosphere if they sign someone like Rascal in that flex DPS role. And if they can get a good main a main, good off tank as well. Toronto Defiant fans, it is looking good on paper right now. It really, really is for the first time in a long time. And I'm sure you're very hyped over there to try and compete at the top of the league, which you could do if these next transfers go nicely but i'm gonna leave it here for this one so thank you guys so much for this video if you like to give a like subscribe if you're new and i'll see you in the next video see you then